Hi everyone. In this example, we will look at another very widely used case uh, for machine learning, which is to identify unusual pattern in financial transactions that may be indicating a fraud. This is very important use cases for bank and credit card companies where daily a lot of uh, fraud is reported, often due to misuse due to several factors. We will look at a public data set, uh, which is a credit card fraud detection data set, which contains transactions since 2013. This is a fairly large data set, but it has many several features. It has time, some around 28 features, and then the amount of the transaction and the class, which indicates whether it's a fraud or any normal transaction. These features are actually a form of PCA component analysis, which is transformed from very original large number of features. This is also done so as to save uh, the privacy of people from which this data was collected. Again, this is a very highly imbalanced data set because the fraud transactions are rare as compared to the normal transactions. So we have to pose this problem as a form of anomaly detection problem where we have to detect the anomalies where the fraud is happening. Anomaly detection is very widely studied field in machine learning. In this case, we will use a simple algorithm for anomaly detection and look into how to analyze the performance of such an algorithm. First, uh, if you have not installed many of these libraries, you can install them in your local notebook. I'll also share this notebook link so you can directly run it online. We will load the data set and let us look into the data set and see what the data look like. We are loading it with Pandas data frame. This data has uh, 31 columns, like you see at the time column and then 28 different features associated with it, the amount of the transaction, and also the class, the zero means it's a normal transaction. So fraud transactions are very rare. Overall, there are around 28,000, uh, 2,84,000, so 284K features, uh, 284K rows in this data set. It's a fairly large data set and 31 columns. If we plot how the classes look like, let us look at that. So there are around uh, two classes, like normal and fraud. Uh, normal class is 284K. So roughly most of the classes are normal. There are around 492 fraud transactions or 492 fraud. There's a needle in a hit stack problem. To learn in this case, uh, we really need some intelligent algorithm to isolate these patterns. First, let us look at the distribution of amount by class. So often it's a good idea to analyze how the data looks like because such an analysis often tell us a lot about the data. Here we have plotted the amount in the form of whiskers plot or the box plot. It's a logarithmic scale and each of the class, so zero and one. So a lot of commonality in the terms of amount of fraud and transaction, each transaction, how the amount look like. Normal transaction amount is between 10 and 100 most of the time. Fraud transaction, it's overall lower, but you see the boxes are wider. So many transaction with high amount, many transaction with low amounts, but it's a lot of overlap is happening. So it is often hard to directly just use these things to predict what is fraud and what is not. Although often if transaction amount is widely different from what a user is normally doing, it's good to flag this transaction. Before uh, creating a model, we will do feature scaling with standard scalar. Standard scalar is often widely used because it improves algorithm sensitivity to feature scales and also most of the feature on the similar scales. It prevents the dominance by large features, for example. Depending on how the internal loss function for the models are designed, often a good idea to do this. We'll do the scaling. Here we will use isolation forest. Isolation forest is an anomaly traction algorithm. It efficiently identifies outliers by isolating them into smaller partitions. Since these outliers or anomalies are very rare, we want to isolate them with as few partitions as possible. And we want to uh, kind of find which, which of these uh, data set or anomalies are. Isolation for us, again, in, takes a um, kind of uh, parameter which identifies, for example, the contamination, which kind of gives an idea to the model that roughly 1% of the say data is outlier, which we can see as we analyze and plot the data. It's crucial to tune this sensitivity, for example, for anomalies. If you know less than 1% of the data are anomaly or 2% or 10%, and depending on that, you can kind of tune this parameter. Internally, it randomly selects features and splits the data to detect anomalies. So it randomly creates uh, splitting patterns uh, when it's through this forest. Let us create X and Y out of this data. X is the number of features which you want. Y is actually the class which you are after to predict. We again uh, do around 20% split, so test size. We will use 20% data as test to see how the model actually is doing. We have not done a lot of fine tuning here, but training a model directly in a simplified form. Let us look at how this model does. 
if we train this model in a simplified form, we are evaluating this. So we evaluate it in the form of confusion matrix classification report, and we look at as pattern occurrences here. One important thing to notice here is that since it's an uh, isolation forest anomaly detection kind of model, accuracy is not a good measure because most of the example anyway are normal. And if you just predict normal, you will have like 99% accuracy. This is where we have to understand the conf confusion matrix or precision and recall kind of things. On the training data, if you look at the training thing, how good the model is doing. Precision is very good for the normal class. For the one class, which is kind of the anomalies or which are the frauds, we are around 10% precision or 11% precision, which is kind of reasonable saying that out of 100 fraud detected, 11% are real fraud and 90% uh, 90 or so are actually not fraud. But uh, missing a fraud transaction is more painful. So it's okay to detect more as fraud and later on, for example, uh, which are normal, you can filter them out maybe using a human. Recall is what is very significant here. For the frauds, we are able to recall around 60%. So there are around 40% or so transaction which are fraud, but were not detected, but around 60% or so are fraud. This is a reasonable model. It's not the best performing one, but it kind of detect around 60% of the transaction which are fraud with a precision of around 11%. This is on the training data. Now let us look on the test data. On the test data model does reasonably similar. So model is kind of generalizing. So on the test data again, we have around 10% on the precision and 63% of the recall. So around 60 plus percent of fraud or interaction, we are able to recall. One thing to note, the accuracy of 98, 99% is very misleading. It is telling us overall how many correct labels are predicted. But we have to look into that. For example, in this test data set, around 98 labels were only fraud. Out of the 98 labels, we were able to recall around 63% of them, which is a reasonably good metric. Uh, this is a very simple example to getting started into this domain. And I hope you all enjoy learning more about the credit card for detection.